Welcome to Compute 175. In this video, we'll learn how to use the debugger in Wing 101 to trace through code and troubleshoot bugs. I've written this function to compute the nth Fibonacci number. The only problem with this function is, well, it doesn't work. At all. It has a bug. Allow me to demonstrate. For any n I give it, it always returns 1, when it should return the nth Fibonacci number. Let's try it out. So, the Fibonacci number of 2 is 1, and the Fibonacci number of 4 is actually 3, but I get back 1. And let's try a big number. The Fibonacci number of 20 also returns 1, when it's actually 6,000-something. I have to fix something in my program but I don't know where to start. One way to try to figure out where the problem is is to trace the program with pen and paper, executing the program line by line in my head and writing down how the variables change in a table. But doing this manually on paper would be tedious and error prone. What would be a lot better is if I could stop the program while it's running in Python and have Python itself tell us what the variables are and consequently, how the variables are changing, line by line. This is exactly what the debugger allows us to do. We can run our program with the debugger by pressing the bug icon right here, instead of pressing the play button. So let's try it. Well, it looks like it ran like normal. That's not what I wanted at all. I wanted to pause the program so I can inspect the variables. To tell the debugger when to pause, I have to set a breakpoint. To set a breakpoint, I have to click in this column between the line number and the line itself to indicate which line to pause on. In this example, since I don't know what's wrong with my function, I'm going to set a breakpoint on the first line inside the function, which is line 3. When a breakpoint is set, there will be a red circle right next to the line. This indicates that the breakpoint is active, and the debugger will pause the program once it reaches that line. Let's try this again. I'll press the bug button and... There we go. This red line indicates that Python is paused right before executing this line. Now, how do I inspect the variables? On the bottom panel, there should be a tab labeled Stack Data. Click it, and you should see a list of variables on the left and their values on the right. Since we paused before executing line 3, the only variable defined so far in our function is the argument n. OK, so let's instruct the debugger to run the next line. To do this, we'll press the Step Over button. This over here is the Step Over button. When we click it, it runs one line of code. Here it ran line 3, assigning a to 0, and highlights the next line that will be run. We can tell that it did the assignment of a equals 0 by looking at the stack data panel. Once we go back to the stack data panel, we'll see there's a line that says a, and its value is 0. So if I step over the next line that says b equals 1, it should run that line. And if we look down into the stack data, there is a variable called b, and it has the value set to 1. We can now execute a Python program line by line by pressing the Step Over button and look in the Stack Data panel to see how the variables are changing. Let's use this to debug the issue with our program. We'll step over to start the for loop. As you can see, initially i is set to 0. Then we'll execute the assignment c equals a plus b. Excellent. So now we have the variable c, which is set to a plus b, which a equals 0 and b equals 1, so that equals 1. OK, so c is now added to the stack data. I know that for the next iteration of this implementation of Fibonacci, a and b should be set to the previous two Fibonacci numbers. So initially, a is 0 and b is 1, as we set up at the start of our function. After the first iteration of the loop, a should be 1, and b should also be 1. Let's step over this final line in the loop to execute it. 
Okay, good. So now A is set to 1, and B also happens to be set to 1. So far, so good. A and B are what I expect them to be, namely, the last two Fibonacci numbers. Now, if I press step, the debugger will repeat the loop. Let's press step one more time. Okay, good. I is equal to 1, which means we're in the second iteration of the for loop. Let's execute that C equals A plus B line again. Okay. Good. So C equals 2, which is the third Fibonacci number. That's awesome. So then A and B should be updated in turn such that A is 1 and B is 2, right? So A and B should be reassigned to the next two numbers in the Fibonacci sequence, that is A equals 1 and B equals 2. So let's step over this A equals B line. Okay, A equals 1, this is good so far. And now, wait, B didn't change at all in this loop. It should have been assigned to 2 in the last iteration of the loop, but it's still 1, as we can see in the stack data panel. I think I know what's wrong here. I forgot to assign to B inside the loop body. But just in case, let's debug the rest of the function. I'm going to set a breakpoint on the return statement on this function to look at how my variables changed once the loop is finished. So I'll set a breakpoint right here at line 8. The debugger is still paused at this line in the function at line 5, but I can make it continue until it hits the next breakpoint by clicking the bug button once again. Alright, that continued the execution and paused once it hit the next breakpoint. So I've determined that the problem might be that we're not updating the B variable in each iteration of the loop. So if we look at the stack data before the function has returned, we see that, yep, B was assigned as B equals 1 at the start. And now that the function is returning, it's still assigned to 1. Looks like we'll need to add a line of code in the for loop. I'm going to hit the stop button to stop debugging. OK, let's fix the problem. At the end of this loop, I know that B should be updated to the next Fibonacci number in the sequence. Hold on. Which variable holds that information again? I'm actually going to set a new breakpoint right here at the A equals B line. And while I'm at it, I'm going to unset the previous breakpoints. You can unset a breakpoint by simply clicking on it. So I'm going to unset the breakpoint at line 8 and unset the breakpoint at line 3. OK, great. Let's hit that debug button. And let's have a look at our variables. A is 0, and B is 1, and C is 1. That's good. I'm going to press the bug icon once again to continue until I hit that line again. All right, so we're in the next iteration of the loop, and A is 1. B is 1, and C is equal to 2, which happens to be the next Fibonacci number. So at the end of the loop, we can assign B to the value of C. I'll hit stop and make this change. All right, so B is equal to C. I'll unset the breakpoint, and now let's run it. Ha! Excellent! The 20th Fibonacci number is 6,765. Just to make sure it actually is doing the Fibonacci sequence, let's try print Fibonacci of 3, which I happen to have here in the table. That is equal to 2. So let's try it. Ha! <laughs> Excellent. It is number 2. And then the fourth Fibonacci number, which I have written down here, should be 3. Yes! Excellent. It looks like it's working. So we fix the function, and we use the debugger to figure out what was wrong. In this video, we saw how we can use the debugger in Wing 101 to pause Python's execution to pinpoint the issues in our program. We learned how to set and unset breakpoints, how to step line by line, and how to use the stack data panel to view how variables are changing in our program. In a future video, we will explain how to use the debugger to debug code with multiple function calls.